Okay, so let me quickly look at some of the misconceptions about software product lines. First of all, they are not about the kinds of small-grained software reuse that you would find in some early efforts to create reuse libraries, for example. And this is typically based on the experience of people that have worked on a previous project and they recognize opportunities to save some of those artifacts for use on the next project. Or it may be the case that an organization has recognized in general that there's a lot of stuff within the organization that ought to be capable of being reused in future product development efforts. And so they collect all these things into a reuse library. The theory being that once we have this library established, then everybody will know where to go to look for these reusable things, and they will use that as the basis for all future products, and everything will work out just fine. In practice, of course, this has never happened. Reuse libraries have never worked for any number of reasons. First one is, if you create a reuse library, does anybody know that it exists? How do you get the word out? Secondly, if you do get the word out, how easy is it to use? Is it easy to find things in this reuse library? Is it easy to retrieve things? If I am looking at the requirements for a specific product, and I see these things in the reuse library, how easy is it to determine whether or not there's anything in there that meets the needs of what I'm trying to build down here. Mm -hmm. So you need more support than that in a reuse library. Oh, also, in a reuse library, is there any level of certification of quality or goodness of fit of the artifacts in the library with the kinds of products you are trying to build? So reuse libraries have really... One of the biggest disadvantages of a reuse library is the creation of the reuse library becomes an end in itself. So we are now becoming a reuse organization. Okay, that means we create a reuse library. You collect all these reusable artifacts or artifacts that you believe are reusable from across the organization. You put them into this library and then you hope that everything will go from there. Well, without some institutional support, you are not going to get very far with a reuse library approach. If you don't plan for reuse, if you don't engineer the artifacts for reuse, if you don't set up the supporting infrastructure, if you don't have the money available and the process discipline to ensure that the artifacts are capable of being reused across the products that are within the scope of the product line, and you don't have the discipline to enforce reuse of those artifacts in product building, so that product building isn't going down a clone and own path, then a reuse library just is not going to support your goals for a product line. Product lines are not just single system development with reuse either, which is what Celsius Tech was practicing before they launched Ship System 2000. It's not just about taking what was reused from a previous customer product or project and then tailoring that for reuse on the next one. You're never really cultivating a core asset base that way. You're just doing successive improvements of an existing product or successive modifications, which may not necessarily be improvements. And it's not just component-based or service-based development either. So th this idea of a set of plug-and-play components is fine up to a point, but you do need the overall guidance of a software architecture and a production plan for how you're going to create products from those reusable artifacts. And it's not just a configurable architecture, although any one of these things is useful in and of itself, but it's not the whole story. So you can't bet the farm on component-based development alone or having a configurable architecture alone. Remember, an architecture is just one of the assets in the core asset base. It's not releases and versions of single products either. And in particular, it's not a way to allow you to scale up from building 10 copies of the same product to 1,000 copies of the same product. Your goal in a product line effort is to be able to create multiple different products from the same set of core assets. 
And you do that by anticipating the range of commonality and the range of variability over the set of products that you have identified as being within the scope of the product line. So you've done your homework with respect to the set of products and the business case and so on. And you have created a core asset base to support that set that allows you to create different kinds of products from the same set of core assets. And finally, it's not just a set of technical standards. So just because you're using the latest version of ANSI C++ and the latest UML and the latest XML, that doesn't mean that you are operating as a product line, although certainly operating according to standards is a way of achieving one of the important quality attributes of interoperability. But a set of standards alone is not going to get you a product line. Finally, a note on the terminology. And I think by now you're getting the idea that a core asset is not just software. We're not just talking about software components when we say core asset. A core asset base then is the complete set of assets, both software and non-software, that you have set up to support your production capability. Uh, when we talk about product line development, we don't mean that everything that you create is developed in-house within the organization. Some of what is created could come from contracting with external sources, for example. Some of the components you put into your products could be bought on the open marketplace. Some could come from an open source development effort. But we use the term product line development generically to mean the production of products from reusable artifacts. And when we talk about domains, we're really talking about the areas of expertise that you have in-house, the reusable domain knowledge that allows you to be successful in those particular areas in your uh, products. Um, product line practice, then, is really what our framework is all about. And we have categorized the practices in the framework into the three broad skill sets of software engineering, technical management, and organizational management. And we'll see some examples of that later on. And finally, software product lines are about strategic reuse, not the uh, accidental kind of ad hoc reuse that gets you a uh, reuse of artifacts from one project to the next or a reuse library.